In this trigonometry video, we want to determine the general solution of the following equation. Now, when they ask us to find a general solution, they're actually asking us to solve for x in this equation. When I inspect the left-hand side, I notice that I have two terms, because terms are separated by a plus or a minus, and I notice that cos x is a common factor in both of those terms. So before I'm trying to solve for x, I'll take out a common factor of cos x. So in the first term, if I take out cos x, I'm left with 2 sin x. And in the second term, if I take out a cosine x, I'm left with cos x. And this is equal to 0. Now in order to solve the equation, I can set cos x equal to 0. And I can set 2 sin x minus cos x equal to 0. So I'll have two possible solutions. So the first one is cos x equal to 0. Or we'll have 2 sin x minus cos x equal to 0. So what I'd like to do is I uh, split my page up into two parts. And I'll first find a general solution for cos x equal to 0. So I have three steps for doing a general solution. The first one is identify the quadrants in which I'm working. The second step is to find the reference angle. And the third step then is to solve x. So we are working with zero. So I see zero as a positive number. And from our Cartesian plane, I know that cosine is positive in quadrant four and in quadrant one. So my first step is I identify that I'll use quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. My second step was to find a reference angle. So I would say that the reference angle is equal to the reciprocal function of cos when it is 0. And that is equal to 90 degrees. So what you do to find the reference angle is on your calculator, you put in shift and then you press cos and it will display cos negative one and you put in the value of zero. So we have partially solved this equation now. So for quadrant one, I'll have x is equal to 90 degrees plus k times 360, where k is an integer. And for quadrant four, I'll have x is equals to 360 minus 90 degrees plus k times 360. So that means that x is 270 degrees plus k times 360. So we always need to show k times 360. So imagine that this is a cosine graph from 0 degrees up until 360 degrees. And we can see that it meets 0 or has the value of 0 at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. That is what we have worked out. But you need to remember that this graph can repeat itself. So after 360 degrees the graph would restart and repeat itself every 360 degrees. That is why we say k times 360. And we also say it's an integer because we are thinking about full rotations. So when k is 1, it's a full rotation in the positive direction. And when k is negative, it's a full rotation in the negative direction. Now let's move on to the second part of our solution. We have 2 sine x minus cos x. So we want to find x. So what I'll do is I say 2 sine x is equal to cosine of x. So I move over the cos x. And then what I would do is I'll divide both sides by cos x. This will create sine over cos x, which is equal to tan. So we have 2 tan of x is equal to 1, because on the right-hand side, cos divided by cos will become 1. Now, if I simplify further by dividing by 2, 
I know that tan x is equal to a half. So now we can identify the quadrants. That's our first step. Then we'll find the reference angle. And then lastly, we would solve for x. So for the ratio of tan, we only need to consider the first quadrant where everything is positive or the second quadrant where only sine is positive. And we can see that tan x is equal to plus a half. So that means that we will consider quadrant 1 only because in the second quadrant tan would be negative but this value is positive next we'll identify our reference angle so for the reference angle we use shift tan on our calculators again and we put in our half and that value would be 26.57 degrees now remember the reference angle will always be acute or it will be a right angle. So therefore, for quadrant 1, we have x is equals to 26.57 degrees plus k times 180, where k is an integer. Now the reason why we use 180 for tan is if I inspect the tan function, we can see that the period of a tan function is 180 degrees. That means after 180 degrees, that pattern that we have up until 180 degrees would actually repeat itself. So this represents the period of the tan function, which is only in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. That's why we don't consider 360 for tan. And that's our final solution. So the values of x are x can be 90 plus k times 360 or x can be 270 plus k times 360 or x can be 26.57 plus k times 180.